Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So, oh yeah, this mic setup's a little bit finicky and camera setup, but we're going to talk through it. I thought I'd do this differently and sort of put it on the right side. So it looked like I'm looking at the patch notes because I was like, hey, that's creative. And I'm like, ah, whatever. Nobody's going to care. Anyway, all right. Uh, so let's have a look at the patch notes. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail about the overall patch notes. Where I'm going to really come from here is the changes that will actually probably be seen when it comes to builds. Um, and there's going to be a number of changes. In particular, obvious, the obvious ones are, are like Righteous Fire is copying it and Vortex has copped it just royally. Um, but what I'm interested to see is like Frozen, frozen uh, something about... Anyway, Frozen Army and things like that, I think it was called. We're going to have a look at stuff like that. But anyway, the first thing we need to look at for changes uh, to, you know, builds and metas and whatever... Um, is obviously there's a lot of builds that do use uniques and there were changes that were put through to unique items. Uh, so unique balances and item balances. Now we're not too concerned about like base item balances here. Like this isn't really a huge earth shaking sort of thing. And I think they've added in potentially new base items as well according to their general changes. But, pardon me. The, um, the first thing is unique balances, and this is where people are going to get like, you know, you might look at the skill and be like, hey, the skill's still pretty good, but then when you look at the unique item, you're like, whoa, that, that scales it up in the end game. This is not great. This is an example with Heat Shiver. So Heat Shiver for a long time has been a really problematic item because it was really good. It was 100%, um, you know, extra fire damage against frozen damage or gain... Um, yeah, gain 100% of cold damage as extra fire damage against frozen enemies, which was insane. So it was great on Glacial Hammer builds. It was great on, you know, uh, what was it? Um, Frost Blades. It was really good on all those types of builds because this is a free additional damage that you were going to scale with like one really cheap item um, that would drop, you know, pretty consistently. Like with this change, we're looking at just a monolithic shift in like damage scaling so you're going to be looking at builds that were like you know oh we're using heat shiver for this it's not going to be the item to go to anymore or you know we, it might still be but there's probably going to be better options out there um in particular there's a lot of uh there's seven new i think replica unique items and things like that that might actually be much better items than what heat shiver was so that's the first thing we probably look at uh ashes of the stars uh, so we're losing the reservation efficiency um this was like one of the big ticket items with this particular or big ticket rolls on this particular item that dictated the ability of certain builds to be able to progress and arguably like you could just roll charisma as the anoint because generally with builds that were rolling ashes charisma was the go-to but there's actually one really important thing to bring to the table here with both the the nerf to replica dragons flight and with the nerf to ashes around reservation efficiency, uh, what this basically means is this is going down to 5 and 10 on Dragon's Flight because that item was insane, is that all's uprisings are now back on the table as one of the, and I've always argued this, have always been one of the best amulets in the game. So for those of us who delve, and I'm looking at anyone who follows my channel predominantly, including, you know, myself included, uh, all's, Upri all's Uprisings is a free major aura. You save like a huge amount of mana and you get really good stats out of an All's up Uprising anyway. And you could couple that with Charisma and just have this crazy amount. And that's why a lot of the builds that I generally tend to gravitate towards, I generally tend to use All's Uprisings. So we're going to lose the hat because I'm looking a bit shady with it. Um, so by no means is Ash is a bad item. It's still a good item. It just doesn't have as much value as what it once had. So what you probably see is the price of Ashes will drop unless something else comes out in the league that they're planning on putting in, or unless you can supplement this in the new Ascendancies, which we'll talk about in the next video that I upload as well. Um, so those are a couple of big changes. The other one was like Kaom Spirit Unique Gloves. This was used on a lot of builds, including like armor stacking builds for like Molten Strike and things like that. This has been nerfed to a degree. Like it's not going to be a bad item irrespectively it's not going to be as good um but those builds were crazy anyway so yeah um i noticed this one getting around as well annihilation annihilation's approach like these were getting abused all of last league too so they've been nerfed to 
essentially drop damage down. But the like the nerf is six thousand takes six thousand instead of ten thousand. Like I don't know. I'm not as across builds that use this particular item, so you know, definitely open the conversation in the comments about it. But I don't necessarily think that's going to be a major game changer but then there will be people that will be like this is a monolithic change okay so ephemeral edge was actually a really good item used for blade trap um and so attacks with ephem ephemeral edge now have added maximum lightning damage equal to 20 percent of ma maximum energy shield i actually think potentially this change is going to improve improve blade trap um i'm not 100 percent sure but I have a gut feeling this will improve, improve Blade Trap. That being said, I never considered Blade Trap a very good league starter. So, you know, do with that what you will. I don't think that's going to have a, as big of a change as what people might make it out to have. Uh, Relic Kesha's Impatience. This one upsets me just a little bit because I was looking at this for like channeling skills because this is the perfect set of boots for channeling skills. Um, so obviously with like my Incinerate build, I use this. Now, there's other ways to get around this, which is... Obviously, with the changes to lab, they've now made it so that the grand spectrum jewels, you know, you're plus one to minimum endurance charge plus per brand, uh, you know, grand spectrum jewel, um, they're, they're going to become either more valuable or with the lab changes, they're going to become more available. Um, take your pick. Uh, and so, you know, where these boots are losing their luster, you're going to be able to do grand spectrum stacking, which will compensate for that, which will be you know, the payout of three additional jewel sockets to have reached the same outcome as what you would have got with uh, with Relic Ashes and Patience. So do I think it's like an insane change, whatever? Like, it is a big change for this. What it's going to stop is Ice Trappers going in and, like, one-tapping Uber Bosses and stuff like that predominantly, and I'm pretty sure that's partly the target of reason as to why they went after these boots because they were just really, really good for a long amount of time when they got patched was it a, however many leagues ago. It was like four or five leagues ago. They were just insane. So I'm upset by that, but it means like builds that use like channel and stuff. Obviously, uh, you know, you can use things like Legacy of Fury and um, and or Craft Rare Boots and things like that, which are probably going to have a better outcome. And the other thing is like we saw rolls with the, <coughs> pardon me, with the um uh with the primalist ascendancy which basically had like you know one to minimum frenzy charge one to minimum power charge as an example so you're going to be able to prop this up by other means which is going to be on the skill tree and in combination with the new ascendancy that's you know essentially you can buy jewels with certain roles or ascendancy nodes with certain roles on it so i don't think this change is going to be as significant as what you think you, it might be it's just going to be, there's different ways to compensate for it, which is always how, you know, meta shakeups work. You just have to find another way to do what you could do before to get to more or less the same result. Um, Replica Bones, let's be real, nobody really cares about that item. Replica Mist Walker, I can see the value in this. Um, you know, you are at maximum chance to block spell, spell damage if you have not blocked recently, instead of plus 75%. Um, like maybe for evasion builds where you're not going to stack um, spell suppression and you do by chance get hit or something like that. Well, you need spell suppression for that anyway, but you know, or max dodge builds or something like that. Um, you know, if people even play that anymore, um, that this could be an item that could give you an added defense layer, but you know, I, I've never been too across Mist Walker builds. So yeah, I, I don't, like, it's a cool roll. It's an improvement to the item, if anything, for anyone who does use that particular item. Uh, Replica Perfect Form Armor has been reworked. It no longer provides max dex, max life, um, or hollow palm, or causes flesh and stone to have uh, no reservation. It now provides versatile combat at 20% chance to block attack damage. I actually think that's not too bad of a roll. Um, I... I yeah, Versatile Combatant, for anyone who doesn't know, is 50-50 block, um, and it's giving you additional attack block. And potentially, if you're using, like, Evasion Conversion to Armor, this could be a fantastic item if you're wanting to run Versatile Combatant on Armor builds. And actually, you're like, you could potentially use this on, like, Bone Shatter and stuff like that. Uh, this is more workable. Like, I think it's a good change because no one really used this item either. So, you know, there is that factor too. Uh, replica bit of dreams getting buffed so instead of level one elemental proliferation um, which is what it used to be you get level 15 so that's an improvement 
replica aura sacrifice no longer has one set like no one like who uses replica aura sacrifice like i might be talking out of lockstep here but i don't think anyone really cares about that change so we're not going to lose any sleep about that at this stage okay so let's just jump straight into skill gem changes now I'll just clarify these are base skill gems we don't have the i think it was a transmuted um whatever it is uh skill gems yet and that comes out during the week and there'll be another video that we do on that anyway so absolution uh now causes minions to have zero to 40 percent cooldown recovery rate uh versus instead of dealing flat damage this is actually an improvement so on the um on the absolution skill there is like a big hit a big charge hit or something of that nature and that increases the cooldown recovery of those bigger hits so it means the bigger hit frequency is improved from your absolution minions which is probably <clears throat> a better outcome than just having flat damage scaling across the board because if they're hitting with their major hit on a more consistent basis then they're going to do more damage theoretically so this is actually a buff for anyone who plays absolution which is a really good minion build anyway um though it underperforms now that we don't have the caloundra crafts on items um, that we had with like negative 70 percent lightning to run with doriani's but there is other ways to get around that, like using vent as gambles and things like that with negative lightning stacks. So that's all completely doable. Um, Alchemist Mark, <coughs> pardon me, <clears throat> bit of a benign change. Doesn't really make too much difference. Just increased mark effect, which is fine. Ambush, like, let's be real. Nobody uses ambush for anything significant. Um, Ancestral Cry is slightly nerfed um, we use this on bone shatter to proc up our hits so usually run call to arms and then run around with bone shatter and then smack things like it's got 40 percent increased cooldown recovery actually no it's not nerfed it's a buff so we can have it up, have more uptime so then buff that's actually good i misread that um ancestral protector melee strike range is an interesting one like does that do anything only if you're going to use it as a, like most people use it as a support totem um and you can proc um you know different effects with it or whatever and maybe that might be a significant change but really we just use effectiveness of the totem but that being said it is disappointing because now we can't get phantasmal um ancestral protector which uh increases your attack speed by an extra percentage based on the quality it used to be the role so it's going to affect melee builds that do use phantasmal unfortunately um, and or totem builds as well in particular are going to get hit by that that being said we don't know what the new um, new versions of the gem will be from the lab enchants as well so it's very likely that <coughs> pardon me there will be a really good role that you can get on it that you could actually play an active ancestral protector totem and in fact we were thinking about this last league um, to the point where i have a draft tree where we use uh, a series disfavor axe to stack up like an on hit ancestral projector totem build and then basically use i think it was wilma's helm something like that and that throttles the attack speed on that as well and makes it do more damage and then dawn strider boots will then increase the attack speed further by the by giving it totem effectiveness as well or you know uh, attack speed effectiveness or whatnot so there's a few ways that you can make a straight up ancestral protect protector totem build potentially just or physical damage scaling and so this change sort of makes that better makes it easier to work with but that being said not entirely sure um how that's going to impact this but the loss of phantasmal at this stage sort of nerfs some other builds that did use that scale attack speed uh war chief totem increased activation range i do like that because the problem with war chief totems is if you're not close enough it doesn't hit and because it does do aoe um that's a bit of a problem so this is actually a buff more so than a nerf because the 20 percent damage on it is benign essentially versus being able to hit more things within a bigger radius animate guardian is an interesting one so no longer has 76 increased maximum minion life um and minions deal 76 percent increased physical damage or melee and cause uh, minions attacks to deal additional physical damage as well um it now has zero percent more minion maximum life and more <coughs> minion damage at level one both scaling 38 percent at gem level th at 20. anime guardians now have roughly 11 percent more life base uh a lot more life base more base life inherently and have more physical damage while unarmed um, what that basically means is they're not too bad now so uh, as far as damage dealers and in fact there is a uh, there's a smite variation of the and the animate guardian as well um 
all of this means that potentially we're going to be seeing animate guardian minion builds that actually do damage so you're going to have an animate bro that's going to go around and whack stuff and i think that's really cool and it's something i wanted to do last league but i couldn't get it to work so um this is a really good change and i think this is changing the minion meta is is good it's bringing back minion builds with this meta as you would have seen with my video around the raised zombies as well with the changes that we'll talk around shortly uh animate weapon um just allows for two more animated weapons which you may not think that that's big but it is because if you can get the damage up with animate weapon weapon then that's going to scale another two weapons on that that's a good outcome um arc <coughs> pardon me now is increased base critical strike uh, to 6%. That's not a big change. No longer gives you 10% chance to shock. So you can find other forms of shock, which is fine. Uh, or provides uh, up to 29% increased effective um, lightning elements. Now is 15% more damage with hits and elements for each remaining chain um, at all gem levels. Uh, quality now gives it plus one chain. So having more change on arc makes more sense. So you can hit more things with it. Um, yeah, I don't know about this one. Like, Ark hasn't necessarily been a, a super strong build, but it's also not a not working build either. It's sort of a middle down the line build for a very long time. It has been. And like back in the day, you used to have like Enki's Ark, Ark Witch and stuff like that. And maybe we'll see a resurgence of that. And maybe Ark will actually become a meta again. And it would be good to see that. Like, it's not going to be an exceptional build without investment, but it's probably going to work a lot better than what it has in the past few leagues because it hasn't really been a common build. Um, so we'll see how it plays. Um, <coughs> Arcane Cloak, increased buff effect for anyone who uses Arcane Cloak. That's great. Armageddon Brand. Um, so now it does 10% more damage um, with hits against branded enemies instead of cast speed. So flat damage is always the preference here in this circumstance. And I'm hoping there's going to be more avenues to attach more brands to enemies as well. So you could have like up to five brands on an enemy and then this gets to be a really good build. Artillery, artillery Ballista, plus one arrow instead of flat fire damage. That's an improvement because that's a whole extra arrow that you're going to be firing. And in fact, I wouldn't mind having a look at a build like that this week before League Start to see if there's anything that can be done on a League Start circumstance. Ball Lightning, honestly, not a big thing. It's just radius change. Uh, Bane now apply now quality now causes apply curses to have 20% increased effect, which doesn't seem like it's big but it's doubly effective what it was before and this used to be a really good build so <clears throat> maybe it's pushing it back up and especially with the old quality gems or what we've seen with like wither and contagion this is going to be a pretty cool thing to see what happens um barrage plus one projectiles instead of projectile damage more projectiles is always better so that's a buff battle mages cry cooldown recovery rate again i consider that a buff bear trap well you know no one really uses bear trap so no one cares uh, Berserk with increased cooldown recovery rate. Like, you already got a very high up end with the damage on Berserk anyway. And the problem with Berserk was that you just couldn't have it up enough. So, with increased cooldown recovery rate and the fact that you could probably stack cooldown on your belt with a um, Syndicate craft and things like that, that's actually pretty cool. Uh, no, Blade Blast no longer detonates Blade Vortex Blades, no longer has 80% more increased effect per uh, Blade Vortex Blade detonated quality now provides plus one media radius instead of 10 percent increased area of effect um <clears throat> i'm this doesn't really affect the build honestly like blade blast hasn't really been used for like not consistently for a very long time since they hit it with the absolute nerf hammer and hopefully the alt qualities on blade blast actually do something to make it a playable build again because for anyone who is new to the game or hasn't sort of played poe for the longest amount of time basically what <clears throat> what used to happen is you would you would proc uh blade fall and then you would run a one two punch blade blast build and then that would just explode the whole screen and you just absolutely nuke enemies and so i think it was maybe like four or five patches ago something like that maybe longer it got nerfed into absolute oblivion because it was just the one of the most played builds in the game so i don't know what they're doing with this entirely but blade vortex like you wouldn't run blade vortex with blade blast anyway it just doesn't make any sense because it's highly inefficient makes no sense and for people who do i you know i don't, I don't know how you do it it doesn't seem like a very efficient build to me but hey i'm not going to discredit it uh blade flurry does more damage um you know for each stage 
And so that actually, what I found uh, when I was doing Incinerate is stacking stages was more efficient than just flat damage increases or attack speed increases. So what that means is the total cumulative damage at max stages is going to do a lot of damage, which means like, um, uh, you know, uh, Warcry builds that actually uh, use, was it, um, not Ancestor's Cry, Ancestral Cry, it was another Warcry, that, General's Cry, sorry. So running General's Cry and then running Blade Flurry is a pretty good, like it's not a bad build at all, it's a little squishy and could be tanked up a little more, but you're going to see a bigger increase in damage there than what it was previously, and very likely that meta may make its way back into the game, because at one point that was a really strong build too, and I reckon this will buff that up further. Um, <coughs> Blade Trap, uh, so this is, I'd consider this a buff, so it's, it's increased rotation. Um, and increase trap last time. So it means that the rotation's up there for longer, so while it's up there for longer, it can do more damage instead of flat critical strike chance because it's easy enough to scale critical strike uh, chance anyway in the tree, so it doesn't make sense to have that built into the uh, into the skill. Blade Vortex no longer grants 10% increased phys uh, critical strike uh, for each blade, now grants three to, three to five physical damage, gem level one and gives you a flat increase. So this is actually taking it to 211 from 119. So it's got a flat damage increase. Um, and then you just need to uh, basically find another way to scale crit, which again, you can do relatively easy with, you know, support gems and or the tree and or gear. Uh, quality now provides increased hit rate for each blade uh, instead of AoE. So you can just scale AoE separately but the hit rate's a lot more important, so you don't have like a blade skip or anything like that, which used to annoy me about blade uh, blade vortex. Uh, blade fall no longer leaves 50% fewer lingering blades in the ground if you don't cast a spell yourself. Um, it also no longer has a 100% increased crit strike chance, 6% less damage per volley, or 20% reduced crit strike chance per volley. It no longer has critical tag. I'm unsure about this change, but maybe <clears throat> Bladefall, Blade Blast might be viable again. I don't know. It, it'd be something that we'll have to have a play around with in the POB to find out what it actually looks and feels like and how it scales, but maybe this is a comeback for Bladefall, Blade Blast. I'm not 100%, but just maybe. Um, Blade Storm quality now provides one to maximum number of blade storms at a time instead of skill effect duration. Well, you can level up skill effect duration in the tree, so you don't need to do that on the skill itself. And beyond that, having an additional blade storm means that you would potentially do, you know, depending on what the base blade storm, uh, blade storms left on blade storm is, you would do like a duplicate of, you know, a multiple of what you could originally do damage wise. So that sort of looks like a buff. Um, it looks like all like um, arrow based or bow based builds are going to be plus one arrow, so that's an improvement to blast rain. Um, it's an improvement to uh, media radius for uh, blazing salvo, so that's better than increased AOE. Uh, blight uh, quality now provides uh, zero to negative 0.8 seconds to base duration instead of negative 10 increased AOE. And the alt quality that we've seen with Blight does Contagion as well, which is pretty cool. And I reckon that's going to be a pretty strong build because um, back in the day, you know, your ED Contagion builds, your Blight builds, all that sort of stuff are very strong builds. And then over the last few leagues, they've sort of dropped off, right, you know, pretty significantly. So that could work really well. Uh, Blink Arrow no longer has minions steal 0 to 114% um, damage. Uh, now his minions steal 0 um, percent more damage at gem level one and then scales up to 57 percent from 75 blink arrow clones now have 75 percent more base damage 50 percent more life inherently um, now describes pardon me uh, hit damage instead of damage per second on the skill, skill tooltip well that makes sense um, quality now provides increased cooldown rate instead of the attack and minions have 30% increased projectile speed i don't really think anyone was using blink arrow as an offensive skill and uh, skill and if if they were, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems pretty counterintuitive and very expensive to get working if you could get that working. But that being said, they might be doing this because there might be an alt gem that's going to come out and that's going to actually mean that Blink Arrow leaves a minion that actually does credible damage and that might actually be pretty cool. Um, so we'll see what happens. Body swap. 
uh, we're just looking at increased uh, damage based on your maximum life as base fire damage. So the more health you stack, the more damage you do. And that's, I'd consider a, a, a buff. Uh, bone offering, that's just, that. that's a buff. Um, increased effective offering. Bone shatter, that's, uh, now this one's a contentious one. So what this means, your early game is going to be much stronger. And especially for SSF players who just use the stock bone shatter. And I've been reading the comments around this around and also on our Discord. So there's a ar pretty strong argument that this is not necessarily going to be a nerf um, in, in any way, shape or form. So the way that you used to scale like ramped up bone shatter at endgame is you stack on an ashes, you stack on enhance and you uh, quality stack. Uh, and then with divergent bone shatter, that would increase the attack speed. But what this is basically saying to me is per the stack of trauma, so you would go, you know, 1% per, 1% uh, more damage per trauma. What that would mean is 50 stacks of trauma, um, which you could easily get there without having divergent. Um, you're going to do 50% more damage. And so you won't be as fast. You won't have as many stacks, but your flat damage will be higher. So you'll hit less, but harder. And what that also means is you will have to deal with less trauma ramp up, which means you're not going to take as much damage. And Bone Shadow Bill's already very tanky because we use them for deep delve. So the way that I'm reading this is not necessarily as a nerf, but this means your defense layers are going to increase and you're actually going to be able to hit harder, maybe not as hard as before once you ramped fully on attack speed, but because you're not attacking as much, you're going to be a lot more defensive. And I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily, but I'm obviously going to be playing this build myself on League Start, so it looks pretty cool at this stage, and I'm going to stay positive about it. Uh, brand Recall. Quality now provides 20% increased uh, cooldown recovery. Um, I think that's pretty good because it means that you could have that running and mapped to your move button or whatever, um, and you could actually call Recall a lot more frequently, which is going to increase the damage of the build, so that's a buff. Uh, Burning Arrow, I'm interested to see how this works, 20% more damage with Ignite, and I reckon that potentially with the alt gem qualities of this that are coming out, or the alt gem styles of gems, or the transmuted gems, um, there's going to be the option to bring back the old Ignite Burning Arrow build, which for anyone who didn't know, used to run that on the Elementalist and then stack golems um, before they changed the way that golem stacking buffs work. Um, and then you used to do absolutely mental damage and potentially that's going to be something that we could do again, which is pretty exciting. Okay, I had to take a iced coffee swig there because um, we're talking through the whole alphabet here of skills in PoE and there is a lot to get through. Um, all right, so Caustic Arrow. So quality now provides meter radius. Again, like I think they're just trying to switch that up from AoE. It's arguably not a huge change. Um, it's neither a buff nor a nerf, so I'd consider that relatively benign. Uh, chain hook, unfortunate, or actually, here's the thing: we don't know if alt quality might actually have a chain hook totem version. I'm really hoping that that's the case. So um, when we level up in Azaro, we're going to be trying to find a chain hook version for this. Actually, when the new skill gems come out, we're going to be looking for this. Uh, I just want chain hook totems. Honestly, I don't care about anything else in the game but chain hook totems right now. Like, you know. Give me chain hook totems anyway so it increases rage uh with the skill um for enemies hit instead of aoe <clears throat> honestly no one played this for the aoe anyway because it was horrible and the skill is janky as hell but it would be really cool to see chain hook totems ggg make it happen um charge dash quality now causes illusion to move that uh 20 of your movement speed um increased from what it was previously instead of attack speed, which makes more sense, which actually means charge dash might be a pretty cool build, maybe as an off meta option. So run a super tanky character, stack up charge charge dash and just like body slam your way through enemies. I feel like that's a lot of fun and actually even talking about that makes me want to try and think of a build that could do this. But uh, again, really difficult skill to get working has never really worked when it came out. So there might be an alt quality that comes out on this that might actually be good for the first time ever. Cleave, they just basically did what the Threshold Jewel did previously and took away the buff, the buff, the buff that they gave it in the, was it two leagues ago? Makes no sense to me, but anyway, whatever. Uh, Cobra Lash, projectiles deal 8% more damage to hits uh, and ailments for remaining chain. Previously 5, no longer does 50% um, to damage over time multiplier for poison from critical strikes. 
quality now causes the chain to be any two times greater instead of 30 percent increased crit chance that's actually an improvement you can hit more enemies i do know that there are a lot of cobra lash berserker builds that went around for the last few leagues um i haven't checked part a poe ninja for last league for that but potentially still a really good build so have a look and see what was played last league i don't think that there are any major nerfs to cobra lash well this isn't a nerf per se this is an improvement potentially um and it might be something worth looking at uh cold snap Honestly, no one really plays Cold Snap for what they think Cold Snap's used for. You play Cold Snap as a castle and damage taken skill to have enemies die on your Cold Snap so you can easily generate Frenzy Charges when you're mapping or delving. So this is this change neither means anything um, or does anything at the end of the day outside of being a utilitized skill. That being said, it might actually be an offensive style skill that might be worth playing um, if there's an alt quality to this gem that actually makes sense. Uh, Consecrated Path does more damage to um, targets that are closer instead of increased AoE. Like, arguably 10% AoE can be compensated for pretty quickly with cluster duels and stuff like that. So this is an improvement to the skill. That being said, people haven't really been playing Consecrated Path a great deal because the base damage is pretty weak. Um, you need to do, like, Strength Stacking, Brutus Lead Sprinkler with Iron Fortress and all the rest of it. It gets really expensive. Um... Contagion, again, just radius change. So obviously they're going for like Contagion builds because they've gotten rid of uh, AoE and Righteous Fire and Vortex, so they're probably going to move back to ED Contagion. Uh, conversion Trap, let's be real, no one really plays that. Uh, crackling Lance, and I'm actually going, I'm thinking about running a test run of my old Crackling Lance here. So 10% more damage per intensity. Um, that feels like a pretty big buff. Uh, because the way that I had this build set was to run leadership's price, and then you'd run like Brittle, get it up to 100% crit, and just absolutely smash through enemies with the Inquisitor and cut through defenses with it. Um, and it looks like it may be back on the table again, so it might be worth looking at. Uh, Creeping Frost, benign change. It's literally just meter radius. Um, if you were going to play the old Vortex Occultist or Vortex Elementalist builds, probably switch out from Vortex and just run 100% Creeping Frost moving forwards with uh, GMP. And that's going to do your dot damage build justice. Uh, cremation, uh, Projectiles, um, uh, 10 percent faster. I feel like this is a buff to Cremation, but Cremation, you know, from my experience, pardon me, isn't really like a league starter build if you were looking at it, but its endgame build was fantastic for like simulacrums and delve and everything else. So 10% faster projectiles probably means that it's going to be a much stronger build again, and it was already a strong build, so that's not too bad. Uh, Cyclone. Now I get this question all the time about Cyclone. Can it be played? Um, no longer has first hit deals 50% less damage, which is good. Game one stage every 0.3 to 0.2 seconds while channeling has been taken away. Uh, lose one stage every 0 0.3 sec uh, 0.3 seconds while not channeling. Um, it now has 10% increased AOE per 0.1 meter additional melee strike range at all gem levels. Previously, 8%. So, looking at it, quality now gives you movement speed, which makes it faster. So you don't have to run. Um, oh, was it um, Spore? Whatever it boots it. I can't remember their name specifically. But um, it seems like it might be better, but I don't think it really... I don't know. I just, I'm not convinced with Cyclone. It just turned into a really expensive build to play, and I've never been a big fan of Slayer builds, so it may or may not be better. But I tell you what, it will be better on with Cast on Crit because you get that increased movement speed, so it's not hindering you as badly as, uh, as what it used to. Dark Pack. No one plays Dark Pack anyway, so maybe this will come back, maybe not. It's really just sacrifice, um, you know, 2% of skeleton life to deal that much damage as chaos. So if you stack life on your skellies, you know, they'll do more damage. But the problem with that is skeletons don't really stack life unless there's an ult gem that's going to give them huge amounts of life. Um, decoy totem, it's just a utility skill, still no good. Uh, destructive link, again, like, if you're in a party, you use it, great. But for most of us solo players, it's irrelevant. Detonate dead. This is actually an improvement. So 15, up to 15% chance to detonate an additional cor corpse instead of giving increased car speed. I can live with that because having the 15% chance, chance to do a double um, pop is going to increase your damage. And for anyone who's ever played my Black Flame build, that's pretty damn powerful because this build was just crazy. 
and even if you follow any other like straight fire stacking detonate dead builds they're just great so yeah that's a i consider a buff devouring totem again no one plays devouring totem we don't have explodey totems anymore so it's not a thing i'm not a big player of discharge i know there was a really good uh, slayer build going around for this one now it's 15 percent more aoe per charge consumed at all gem levels previously 20 percent, so it did get a nerf um the base radius is now also described on the gem quality now provides 10 percent chance to deal damage without removing charges and so and that's actually pretty good because it means that you can skip charge charges going out of your um you know pool you know one and ten with a one and ten chance probability of that occurring so it's not really a buff though it's a good utilization built into the skill but the aoe is lower and you want big aoe but yeah there was a slayer i, I didn't big dig too much into the slayer build around this but yeah it could be really cool could be pretty benign to be honest with you this is what i'm excited about divine ire so and this was asked in our discord and i was super keen to get this working but i've never been able to get it working or theory craft it properly because it was just so weak um <clears throat> and i don't think they necessarily ever nerfed it it just was never built very well though there were builds that used to go around and divine eye totems are really cool at one point but there's still just a gimmick um so now has a maximum of 10 stages which I think it had eight before, which is really powerful. Uh, Beam now does 240% more damage with hits per stage after the first, previously 110%, which is a 130% increase, uh, increase to DPS off of this. So you can be guaranteed that the second build that I run this league will be Divine Eye at this stage. And once the POV's up, I'll be theory crafting this because this is awesome. I've been waiting to play a Kamehameha build for a number of leagues now. Um, and 100% more damage with uh, damage and ailments per stage after the first, previously only 30%. So 70% in the subsequent stages. It no longer has 50% less damage while channeling. So it does more, because basically Divine Eye has like this aura thing that shoots around you and can kill stuff. So you get full damage stacks on that. Um, <clears throat> and 40% chance uh, to gain an additional stage when hitting a normal or uh, magical enemy or gains an additional stage when hitting a rare or unique, which is pretty damn cool. Um, quality now provides increased beam width instead of aoe which means this like full screen like i'm a fire my laser type of builds i reckon this is going to be really powerful and i'm going to be taking my incinerate tree which was pretty strong and 100 percent crit and i'm going to apply it to this and see what happens in the next week when the pob gets updated and we're going to theory craft this one because i really like it um dominating blow um so there was like a charge skill that the minions do when they slam into enemies so that's what that looks like it'll have a high probability of minions actually just running and smashing into enemies so that's going to increase your damage <coughs> pardon me double strike no one plays it melee's not still not in a good place so yeah we're not going to look at that same with dual strike it's a benign like they're trying to stack like bleed dot and stuff like that but the reality is like the ascendancies for gladiator need rework and things like that where these skills actually become relevant um so i'm not gonna go into any great detail here um <clears throat> so quality now causes on earthquake the aftershock to deal 30 percent more damage with hits and elements if you're able to stack ignite on earthquake then this would be a significant improvement instead of 20 percent increased flat damage so that's an improvement that's a buff um earth shatter and this is the thing like they didn't really change earth shatter and i'm hoping there's like um transmute quality or whatever it is um gems that change earth shatter for the better because plus one fissure while cool doesn't really do anything because slam builds haven't been good for a long time um elemental hit uh five percent more damage per elemental ailment on the enemy uh it doesn't seem like a pretty like you have what three ailments so 15 percent damage instead of 20 percent increased elemental damage i don't know if i'm correct on that but that doesn't seem like a pretty significant buff to me um <clears throat> it seems like a nerf but i might be wrong uh <clears throat> pardon me sorry guys elemental weakness just like increased duration of elemental ailments on cursed enemies instead of increased effect of curse like that may 
be problematic. Not sure yet. Um, enduring Cry, increased cooldown recovery. Like, I like Enduring Cry, so I think that's cool. Uh, energy Blade. Quality now causes the buff to grant 5% more energy shield instead of causing Energy Blades to have 0 to 10% increased critical strike chance. So that may or may not increase your damage, but if you're stacking damage based off of your energy shield, then it sort of makes sense that, that would increase your damage and you'll just find alternate routes to stack crit. Um, so I don't think that's bad. Ensnaring, uh, Ensnaring Arrow, quality now provides 20% increased debuff effect. This is good if you're playing like Summon Bleed Reaper. And we'll talk about that further down because the Reaper got a buff too. Um, so this is actually pretty cool. And you could play the Reaper build that I put up a few leagues ago if you wanted to. It's going to do more damage because Ensnare is what um, causes the Reaper to do a lot of damage. Because you basically run it as a bow build. Um, a minion build that is a bow build. Um... <clears throat> Essence Drain, quality now provides uh, regenerate negative 0.5% uh, of debuff damage as life um, instead of 20% uh, increased chaos damage, which I'm not sure how this will work, but I feel like they're going to make some changes with this and potentially going to do what they did with Blight and have ED Contagion as like one gem, which if that happens, it's going to be mad. It's going to be awesome. Um, EK or Ethereal Knives, uh, more projectiles, I'll take it. That's good for EK Ignite builds that use Gloomfang. Um, Accentuate. <clears throat> okay, so after another Skittle break, let's keep pressing on. Um, so Accentuate, it looks like they're switching out skill effect duration for base duration. Um, I don't know. It looks like there's something going on here with some mechanics around duration, but a skill effect duration, they're trying to phase that out. But anyway, um, this is, I consider, neither necessarily a nerf nor a buff. Just seems like they're changing the way the mechanic for duration of skills works at the end of the day. Um, EA, or Explosive Arrow, you get plus two to maximum Explosive Arrow stuck an enemy. I feel like this is probably a buff more so than a nerf, bearing in mind, though, you do lose Ignite stack. Uh, you don't stack Ignite, but you do lose uh, probability to Ignite on an enemy, but I don't think it really matters too much um, if you were playing this in some sort of, some kind of Ignite sort of circumstance because at the end of the day, more arrows equals more damage, which equals more fun. Uh, explosive Concoction. We tried to get this working at the starter league, and it was just uh, like in league testing. It's just a horrible build. Like... Um, yeah, arguably, like, the, the only class that can really play this reasonably well is the Pathfinder. And then, you know, you have to scale Ignite on that too, uh, because trying to get it, like, flat explosive damage, like, arguably does work, arguably doesn't work, but it doesn't really work if you try and run it armor, so you have to go an invasion base. Um, I know snoobay has got a build for this, and potentially this will prop that up. But um, at the same time, I don't know. We'll see what the old quality gems are for this one. Explosive Trap. That feels like a buff to smaller explosions as well. Um, and so there's a bit of a shotgun effect there. Uh, so I feel like that's actually going to be an improvement to Explosive Trap. Eye of Winter. I think this was on the Dead Eye. Um, this is really strong in Delve. Uh, there was someone that got down to well over a thousand last league with this. Um, I'd say that this is probably a bit of a buff versus what it used to be. Um, though it was strong before and it's just being improved further. Mainly because you get uh, up to plus two shard projectiles in a, in a spiral when projectile ends. Which I feel like is an improvement. So, uh, Fire Trap now provides 80% increased trap trigger area of effect. Um, that's a buff. So I think what Captain Lance was the one who owns that build. So no. Not Captain Lance. Um, subtracted. So, yeah, I, I feel like that's an improvement. Um, though I know there was a bit of controversy around that one, but either way, it's better than what it was previously. Uh, Fireball. Uh, now has a base radius of 0.9 meters, a gem level 1, and it scales up to 1.4 meters. Again, they're just like changing AoE versus base meters. This could be like a something they're doing in poe2 so they're trying to get people used to this point you know whatever meters scale in the game now no longer has projectiles gain radius as they travel further um up to the maximum 0.9 meter radius and so this does a bit more of a bigger bang at the end of the day um 
and basically they've changed quality to meter radius versus projectile speed so they're trying to go for like fire less fireballs but more explosive hits and i reckon there's going to be like uh alt quality gem that's going to be like ridiculous like one shot explosion sort of thing so they're going to like one shot builds firestorm most likely a advantage to this obviously i made a cast on crit firestorm and quiz the last league um which was really powerful like it was fun as running Aegis Aurora. Um, and now I think we've got like of Comet or something like that, which is like huge nuke come down from the sky and absolutely obliterate maps. And I'm thinking about doing a two handed stave version of the build for this league, uh, maybe a life based variation of the build. Just need to figure out how I'm going to make that tanky. But pardon me. Um, I feel like this is a buff in the AoE front. And on top of that, it's also going to do a lot more damage with the alternate quality, quality gems. Flame, bar, flame Blast with more stages is a damage bar, uh, buff. Any stage increase is a damage buff. Uh, because you can no longer get the enchant for it either. So that's actually, you know, maybe Pizza Totems could bank their way back from, a, you know, was it patch 2 or patch 1? Um, flame Dash... You know, I feel like they're doing this now has modifiers to spell damage applied to skills damage over time. I feel like they're doing this because potentially they're going to make uh, utility skills more offensive in the following year, like with Frost Bomb. So we'll see what happens here. We don't care about Flame Link. Uh, Flame Surge, 20% more damage against burning enemies. This was a build like a long time ago using Flame Surge and then you'd switch out to like other things or whatever. But I'm interested to see what they do with this. Like, this change isn't major for Flame Surge, but it makes sense because you drop Burning Groundwork Blade with Flame Surge. But at the same time, I'm not sure where they're going with this. Uh, flame Wall, you just have more Flame Walls at once. Like, whatever. Uh, flame Thrower Trap. 20% uh, increased cooldown recovery rate, which cooldown is better than flat fire damage, I'd consider, because you can have more uptime. So that's an improvement. Um, Flammability now causes ignite on cursed enemies to have 20% increased duration. Like that feels that that's up from 10% at the max cap. So that's a big improvement. Flesh offering, um, effective flesh offering instead of duration, that's an improvement. Flicker strike now provides 10% chance to gain frenzy charge on hit from five. So flicker strike, we were talking about this in stream. That's a buff. So that's pretty cool. Forbidden right. Quality now causes the skill to fire extra projectiles up to two per surrounding enemy. Um, Forbidden right's still a strong build um, if you've got a mage blood, but it's not a good build if you haven't got a mage blood with a dagger with um, you know enemies cannot evade hits. So it's a good buff to like a high end build, but it's not really it's not really a buff that's going to help you earlier on. Um, Freezing Pulse no longer has 19% increased projectile speed. And it's weird that they make that change unless they're doing something with the skill gem because Freezing Pulse Totems is not necessarily the strongest build out there. And most people within like a week or two end up ditching Freezing Pulse um, Hierophant Totems because it's a horrible build when you go to talk about like tank ability and stuff like that. Um, and if, if you have a look at the PoE Ninja stats, you'll see that people just sort of drop out after like the first two weeks because it's a frustrating build, you just keep dying. Um, but they haven't provided a solution, they haven't provided an alternative to this and that's what's interesting. So we'll see what happens with this. Uh, Frenzy, you can actually used to be able to run like actual Frenzy builds, but really like this is only used for like Spell Slinger and stuff like that these days, so... Uh, it's just increased attack damage and attack speed per frenzy charge so it's like ramp up for frenzy so i don't know i don't know what this is going to be used on but i feel like there's going to be an alt quality for this that could be cool uh frost blades increase projectiles uh to plus two from uh projectile speed which is an improvement frost bomb so the alt quality of this is really cool they're turning this into more an offensive skill so no longer deals four percent damage with hits per 0.1 uh, seconds duration and the debuff no longer causes 75% reduced energy shield regeneration rate. Quality now does 20% cooldown recovery instead of 20% increased cold damage. And the alt quality gem that I think they showed 
was where you could cast this like as a normal spell and you could actually do damage with this which could be quite powerful so it's interesting to see what happens here uh increased cooldown recovery on frost wall like just turning that more into a utilitized skill that's actually workable frost blink increased maximum distance traveled i like it because i like, actually like frost blink it's a pretty cool skill frozen legion this is what I said at the start of the video, is Frozen Army, because I forgot the name of it. 20% um, increased cooldown recovery rate, which is good, because that might actually make it somewhat playable. I don't know. Um, I don't quite know how the damage scales on it, but it'd be interesting to see how it does <clears throat> and the tags that are on the skill, because if it has, like, a minion tag, then potentially that could be quite powerful if you could, like, cast that constantly. But we'll see what happens. Galvanic Arrow, 40% uh, increased projectile speed from 20, so that's been buffed, but nobody really plays it. Um, Galvanic Field increased, uh, now causes the buff to grant 20% chance to shock enemies instead of buff granting 30% increased shock duration. That's actually an improvement, so you can proc a lot more shock, which means maybe Lightning Conduit might be a little better um, versus where it was a few leagues ago, where it was a nuclear skill that destroyed everything. Now it was pretty benign in the last couple of leagues. Uh, General's Cry, plus one to maximum Mirage Warriors. It's pretty good. So that's an improvement. You do lose cooldown recovery, but you can overcome that with recovery on belt. Uh, cooldown recovery on belt, which is a benchcraft from Syndicate. So that's an improvement, and that's because the Helm Enchant's no longer in the game. So it's really just putting the Helm Enchant in the gem. Uh, Glacial Cascade now causes final bursts to do 0 to 50% more damage instead of providing 20% increased damage. Um, I'm not entirely accustomed to what the difference in that wording is, but I feel like that's an improvement. It looks like an improvement. Um, I don't think it's enough of an improvement for it to be like fantastic, but it still looks pretty cool. Uh, Glacial Hammer. Quality now causes every third successive strike to freeze enemies as though dealing 100% instead of 40% increased duration. That's actually really cool um, because that's a very similar effect that the um, oh, there was a Frost Hammer in the game that you would run with it. Um, so that's actually mimicking that effect of that hammer, which means you can double stack it. So potentially, and you usually run that with um, with Heat Shiver. So potentially Heat Shiver, the impact lost from the nerf to Heat Shiver has been reflected in the change to the skill gem, which would make Heat Shiver still a viable item to run with Glacial Hammer builds and whatever. So that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, Ground Slam now causes a skill deal 20% more damage to closer targets instead of 10% increased AoE and increased stun. It's a buff, but Ground Slam is not a good skill because melee is just not really on the table. Um, Heavy Strike Quality now provides 20% chance to deal double damage instead of stun duration. Like, that's good, but again, same problem. No one's playing Heavy Strike. Maybe this will entice people to play Heavy Strike and maybe Trauma Stack Heavy Strike and then... Uh, run that with a magnate so then you've got a high probability of running double damage but again like not too sure with this one see how we go with it actually trauma stack uh, heavy strike sounds like it might be quite powerful with merely splash um herald of agony pl uh, plus five to maximum virulence which is going to increase your agony crawler's damage and then you stack that with i think was a purposeful harbinger um from memory something like that um so that's very likely going to buff Herald of Agony because the more Agony, more virulent stacks, the more damage your Agony Crawler will do. Um, but that being said, not entirely sure how that's going to synergize. And the alt gems might actually prove to be pretty cool if this has got one at all because it is an aura. Um, quality on Herald of Ash now does base burning damage um, to uh, is an additional uh, for up to 5% of overkill damage. I'm not too sure the impact that this will have on Herald of Ash, but it seems like it might be an improvement. Uh, Herald of Ice, 0.2 meter radius um, increase. Yeah, it's sort of a nothing improvement, but it is what it is. Herald of Purity, quality now causes minions to have 40% increased cooldown recovery. This will be for their big hits that they do. So like, um, uh, what was it? Lightning Brand, I think it's called Lightning Brand. Storm Brand, sorry. Uh, Stormbrand Herald of Purity builds might actually be reasonable and they might do a lot more damage, um, but that's something just worth checking out. Herald of Thunder, um, quality now causes Storm to hit enemies with 20% increased frequency. 
Um, so auto bomber builds will get an advantage out of this um, for anyone who plays auto bomber with Herald of Thunder. Holy Flame Totem is up to 40% increased projectile spill, uh, projectile speed. So from 20%, so it's almost double on the top, double on the top end. So that's a pretty big improvement, especially early on. So potentially Holy Flame Totem could be a pretty good build moving forwards um, on the Inquisitor or, so, or something of that nature, or maybe even the um, the uh, Chieftain uh, could be an option there. Ice Nova. Uh, no longer does 20% less AoE when cast. Yeah, so they took away like the cast on Frostbolt thing because that hasn't been a thing in a very long time. It's an old mechanic that nobody really uses because it was shit. Um, it now deals 34, 23 to 34 uh, cold damage gem level 1. And that's a higher base stat, uh, stat rollout than what it was previously. And then it's top end damage is about 351 greater than the maximum top end damage at level 20. Um, so it also now has 230% increased effectiveness of added damage from 190k. So that would mean cast on crit Ice Nova with um, Cosbury Malices are going to be a little more powerful than what they used to be. Uh, so for anyone wanting to play you know, Ice Nova, that feels like it's going to be an improvement uh, than what it used to be. But you're not going to be running Frostbolt on that build. You're just going to be running like other cold skills like maybe Frostbomb and... Um, and Ice Nova moving forwards is going to be the go for Cosbury Malice cast on crit builds. Uh, Ice Shot. Um, quality now provides 60% increased angle um, instead of cold damage, which is good. It just means you can do with more AoE at the end of the day. Ice Spear uh, now causes Ice Shards in the second form to have more crit multi instead of cr uh, projectile speed, which means potentially more damage from Ice Spear because you'll have crit multi and that's a bigger damage scale than projectile speed. Ice Trap now provides chance for traps to tra trigger an additional time instead of AoE. So even though Relic Caches have been nerfed, um, if you're running Ice Trappers, for, you know, usually they're used for taking down like Ubers, that's probably a big buff. Because um, if you have a probability of 15% to every one trap um, going off a second time, I feel like that's really strong. Uh, Icicle Mines, more projectiles instead of projectile speed. I think the comment was like Deep Delve Icicle Mines is back. It's not. It's still not going to be very good for um, Deep Delve because Evasion or Dodge got destroyed. So yeah, that was a long time ago. Um, Immortal Call, increased cooldown and recovery rate. Yeah, that's pretty good. Incineration. Incinerate, sorry. Um, this is what I was super keen on. Plus two to maximum stacks, which is the, um, the old... Uh, Uber Lab uh, Helm Enchant that you could get. Now that's really good because those plus two to stacks on my um, best in socket or best in slot build was like nearly 4 million DPS or something of that nature increase on the base. So you don't have to do labs over and over again to get this. And we also don't know what the alt, alt gems are going to be for this too. So that seems like a pretty powerful improvement. I'm going to revise that build too later this week. Um, Infernal Blow, debuff steal up to 10% increased damage per charge, which is pretty cool. That's more damage, that's a buff. Infernal Cry, increased recovery rate, buff. Intimida intimidating Cry, increased recovery rate, buff. Intuitive Link, no one cares. Uh, kinetic Blast, no longer has increased AoE. Um, quality now causes uh, up to one additional explosion instead of increased AoE, so... That could be either good or bad, depending on how you look at it. That's going to annoy five-way farmers and carries. Uh, connect Bolt. Uh, quality now increases, now causes increases and reductions to spell damage to apply to attack damages from the skill. So that's instead of projectile speed. So that's a pretty big improvement to the skill. Um, lacerate, up to 20% increased attack speed if you've changed stance. I, so I don't think that's very good and i know they were playing that in the play test but i just don't think lacerate's a very good skill anymore so we're not going to worry about that lancing steel more projectiles that's better more damage that's an improvement leap slam increased stun duration um for enemies that are on full life so it's still just utilitizing leap slam because it's not like a thing that you run as a main skill in a build you know unless you're crazy uh lightning arrow uh this is a buff so up to two additional um skill now hits up to two additional enemies near the target that's really powerful and that's a buff so i don't know why they buffed that but because it was already pretty strong um but hey 
each to their own. Lightning Conduit uh, now does up to 4% more damage per 5% shock on enemy instead of 20% flat damage. That's an improvement. If you stack it like up to 20 or 30% shock, that's going to outperform increased damage any day of the week. Uh, Lightning Spy track, Trap quality now causes the skill to strike one additional area instead of shock. Uh, so that's a buff. Lightning Strike, you now get plus one projectile. So that's just putting Lightning Strike back up to where it originally was or close to. Because I think they reduced it to two projectiles or something like that. And then now they're allowing you to take that back. So Lightning Strike will be back in the key, you know, the key meta again, I would assume, for this league. Um, so it's going to be pretty good. Lightning Tendrils got a buff, 40% uh, crit multi on 20% uh, quality. Lightning Trap. Um, additional chance for lightning trap to go off. I'm not too sure of too many endgame lightning trap builds, but it is a really good leveling. Was it storm? Either way, um, that's a buff. So we'll see what comes of that. Mana bond. So there was a change to anomalous uh, mana leech, which potentially affects the top end of this build, but definitely in the earlier sort of end, it's getting a buff with up to 10% of missing mana, uh, of missing unreserved mana is what you do as additional damage, and that's buff. That's not a nerf. Um, instead of AoE, so that's pretty good. Uh, Mirror Arrow, I think I spoke to this at some point. Like, this is like Blink Arrow, they're just making this so potentially you could use this as an offensive skill. Uh, Molten Strike, 10% uh, more damage with hits and ailments instead of fire, flat 20% fire damage. I think that might actually be potentially a buff or i'm not too sure if that's a buff or nerf that's a weird one seems like it's lower but it's probably going to turn out being an improvement uh orb of storms nobody uses it but potentially if they're changing frost bomb then orb of storms will become an offensive skill as well which is why being split towards two additional targets usually you used to use this to generate power charges so i'm interested to see what they do with this and how this will be affected by the alternate gems that are coming out Okay, so now for Penance Brand, which is this one here. So let's just have a read through this one. Penance Brand has been significantly simplified. It no longer spreads energy to nearby enemies or causes regular pulses while at maximum energy. It now immediately causes an explosion. When the branded enemy reaches maximum energy, it no longer causes an, causes an explosion when it expires or detaches from an enemy. It means to be... Uh, it now deals... Uh, up to 265 max base fizz damage at level 1 through to 3811, uh, which is an increase and has, oh shit, 570% from 40%. So originally there was a Penance Brand build that came out when Penance Brand first came around where it used the Assassin, and basically, I can't remember sp specifically how it works, but... Potentially, Penance Brand might be back in the running to be an actual decent build moving forwards, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that actually looks like a pretty decent buff. So yeah, there's going to be something going on with that. It might be worth looking at further. Um, Perforate's another one as well, because there's such a huge damage increase. So this is this one here. Um, so it creates two additional spikes on the perforation. Um, and that's just like flat based on the the quality of the gem and it looks like we're now dealing 155 percent over 125 percent and 265 percent high end from 213 which is pretty significant and that one actually would scale with like a two-handed axe or something of that nature as well so that's a pretty good upgrade as well pestilence strike just does more duration instead of uh, multi so that arguably is an improvement plague blair plague bearer now does uh, deal damage based on addition, an additional 4% of plague value instead of providing AoE. So it's actually more potent than what it used to be as well. So that's an improvement. Uh, quality now inflicts 20% withered for 2 seconds on hit instead of AoE. That's a pretty big upgrade for Poisonous Concoction. So if you're playing that from League Start on like Pathfinder um, or I think you can play it on Raiders. No, you play it on Pathfinder. That'd actually be really, really powerful. Um, in particular, with the new um, secondary ascendancies as well. And there might be some synergies there. And there might be some alt changes to this too, which would be really cool. 
Uh, Power Siphon, for those who play Power Siphons, usually that's an int stacking build either way. It's expensive as hell and you're not going to be playing that from the start of League realistically. Protective Link, no one cares. Puncher, no one... Well, I guess like if we want to bring back the Bleed Bow, um, Bleed Bow build, then Punch is going to be, I guess, one of the goes to inflict a significant amounts of bleeding. But otherwise, like, no one's really going to play Puncture either way. Uh, punishment now causes uh, cursed enemies to be debilitated um, instead of increased effective curse. Uh, that probably is going to be a pretty good attribute for melee builds and whatnot, but yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that as well. That might actually be pretty cool. Uh, Purifying Flame now causes the Shockwave to deal 10% more damage instead of AoE, so that's again more potent, and that was actually not a bad build from League Start as well. Um, going back a few leagues ago, so this one might find its way back into the fold. Purity of Elements is just increasing your overall all elemental resistance instead of AoE, and that's true. Like, no one ever used AoE on Auras. It's the same with all of these. They're like base um, fire resistance for Purity of Fire. Purity of Ice is up to 10% Cold Res, and then up to 10% Lightning Res uh, for... Uh, was it Purity of Lightning as well? So that's pretty cool. Uh, Pyroclast Mines, plus one projectile, um, that's not terrible, and I would say Pyroclast is still going to be consistent for this league as well, as far as what I've seen. I haven't seen any of the items get nerfed, so Pyroclast, um, as with um, the mine builds we were playing from last league, um, probably all still pretty okay and untouched and playable. Um, they're just not overtly tanky unless you play it on the Trickster. Uh, Rage Vortex, uh, it's, oh, look, let's be real, like, it's a clunky skill, um, and there's not really going to be enough that they can do to this, to actually make this a fun, like, I didn't find this fun when I, when I tried Rage Vortex a little while ago, so it just doesn't, doesn't work very well, like, Rain of Arrows, as I've covered off in the curation, uh, plus four arrows at 20% instead of AoE, and this is a really strong build. Um, so Fuzzy Duxy does really good builds around Rain of Arrows. I think he just put out a Raider version of this as well for League Start, so check his channel out. Um, Race Spectre, so 20% all elemental resistance instead of minion movement speed. Like, you, you do a lot of movement speed and whatnot based on your rings and your shields and stuff now, so you don't really need to be stacking that up on your Race Spectre. I'd say this defensiveness to all elemental resistances is a lot more useful now. So this will this tank your specters up. And off the back that now you can buy, you know, corpses um, in the new league mechanic like Hydra and stuff like that. And even though their health is lower, if their defensive stats are higher, then it's not necessarily going to matter so much if their health is lower, if they can take the big hits anyway. So this is an improvement. Um, Ray Zombie, I'm a big advocate that this is a big improvement, so you no longer have the slam, but they just do melee attack damage. Beyond that, you know, there's a 0 to 38% max life cap on gems now, which basically means, and that, that was based on, you only got up to 20% at 20% quality previously, so it's an 18% increase baked into the gem itself on the uh, zombie life, which is sort of going backwards to when barren zombie builds were pretty big and pretty chunky and pretty cool. Um, so I'd say that this is actually going to be pretty good to pop off and I've obviously put this in the curation video that I put up yesterday as well because it's going to be a really good build to play like consistent from League Start 2 because you get Zombie at level 1 if you play, play the Witch um, and or you get it in Act 1 if you play the Guardian I'm pretty sure anyway so um, pretty good skill like minions <clears throat> maybe there's a comeback here for minions too looks like minion metas might be coming back which is really good maybe k gaming will come back to the game um all right rally and cry uh yep it's just cooldown recovery reap i'm not a big fan of reap um yeah like aoe was pretty good on reap because reap has such a short aoe anyway um so i don't know that's that's to be seen reap wasn't a bad build anyway fire reap builds were pretty good um though that was before the chieftain remake uh and then you could still play reap on the inquisitor and whatnot so i don't think this is like a huge change but it is a more potent skill now uh reeve like the only real time i've seen reeve used is like chaos stacking builds and stuff like that which is super expensive so like you can add stages is going to make it a better skill but again it's still going to be really expensive to make it a viable skill unless there's going to be some other significant changes with the alt gems for this. 
Reckoning, I'm interested to see what happens with this. Like cooldown recovery rate up to 40% is huge, which basically means you could go, you know, your max block Reckoning builds again, um, which is what I played uh, originally on the Gladiator, and I was mucking around with a version of that um, in, I guess, pre-league testing. But um, that being said, like even in pre-league testing, it just doesn't feel very good. Um, so I'm not convinced by this. I don't necessarily think this is going to work because, again, just melee just sort of falls down. Um, so we'll see what happens. Rejuve totems, no one cares. Righteous fire, um, and let's just take a moment of silence for Pox at this stage. Um, I don't know how he's going to get around this one, but there's probably, you know, we don't know, we don't know whether or not this is going to be good or bad, but this was more or less like how rf used to work and then they added in base damage which made it a workable skill but it just made it a build that everybody played every single league without fail like without thinking about what they're going to play let's go bam rf um do i think this change is good i don't necessarily think this change is necessarily good um but that being said like you know this has been a meta for a number of leagues now it's been just abused to almighty so maybe it's about time that it makes its way off the meta list um and becomes a more end game build to free up some other builds to be the meta but it's disappointing and not disappointing but the the, the disappointing thing i guess is this was a really newer player friendly build and maybe they should have not like they could have toned it down at least instead of just absolutely tearing out the um the base fire damage per second that it did put out but anyway we'll see how this plays i'd say like the high end that stacks es um and then max cap fire res on low life is going to be the best approach for this and i think that's like the you know i think captain lance or subtract and builds and stuff like that around that but again that's that's going to be an end game upper end build that's not going to be league startable realistically uh, but we'll see what Pox puts together and if he can figure this one out. And we won't know um, whether or not the 70% increase from 35% is going to be bad until we get to um, until we get to league start um, or until we get the POB that comes out. Um, Repose, uh, it's cooldown recovery is cool, but this just wasn't a good skill anyway. Maybe the alt versions will actually make it decent. But yeah, and basically all it is is like you run twin blades um, or dual wield and then you block with your two swords like you know um but it, it's not a good skill so yeah uh rolling magma you get plus two chain which is cool but i'm keen to see what the alt versions of this um turn out to be because i reckon there's going to be some pretty cool stuff so that's a watch this space um the other one was scorching ray which i know that uh we've like i think bill was pretty keen on this one in our discord um yeah, I don't know. I, it doesn't scale the same way as Incinerate. Incinerate's a better channel, channeling skill, but we'll see what comes of this. I, I think this, you know, we may get more damage in the alt, alt qualities of this or alt versions. Uh, Scourge Arrow, this wasn't a bad build either way. Like a, a fair few leagues ago, this was a pretty consistent league starter. So maybe this is coming back um, to a league start scenario and then you stack poison and stuff on it. I don't know, it, it could be. Uh, Searing Bond, I really like the idea of this build and I really want to play maybe a version of this build this league. Basically, you run it on the Hierophant and then you just, uh, or the, I think it was a Hierophant or Guardian. I think it's Hierophant. Um, you just run like a super tanky character and then scale Fire Dot. Um, and then basically you can run around and you just chuck totems all over the place around you until the enemy just is stuck walking through them constantly. Um, and it can take out big like AOE sort of areas and stuff like that. I did throw around the idea of playing one of these builds like two, three leagues ago. But um, yeah, anyway, this makes it a hell of a lot more fun to play. Um, and it actually makes it a lot more viable. So this might be a build that we see a lot more of moving forwards. Seismic Cry, again, just cooldown recovery. Seismic Trap, um, quality now causes the skill to release plus one wave at 20% instead of fizz damage like that's going to be better and it's going to make it more powerful like seismic trappers were very very powerful for a long time and I don't see this dropping off but I think it's of late just become something that people stop playing for whatever reason because it used to be poison seismic trappers I don't think there's any drop off in that so it's all still very workable but we'll see what happens uh, Shattering Steel, this is what I find really interesting with this one. So I read this yesterday. So no longer consumes Steel Shards or Grant Steel Ward or has any of its Steel Ward stats. So does it mean you can just smack it at people or smack it at enemies? Um, if, you, if you have no Steel Shards, only fires one projectile has been replaced. 
um, with uh, no all projectiles. So, so they've just removed steel shards altogether. But how does that work with the other steel skills? And that's what's really interesting. Now it provides 40% increase in pale effect. So this just means like maybe impale could be brought back on the um, on the champion. And so you can run Master of Metal with this and then just start. Because you get Shattering Steel pretty early on in the game. You could just run this and then just run. Maybe the um, there was a, the Savior build might actually be worth having a look at this. So when this was like first around when Call of Steel was a thing, there was a build that was known as the Savior build, which was a double sworded build. And what the Savior is was a drop off... Um, or oh, what's his name, Cyrus, um, and basically allowed you to have like a proxy, like um, sort of sword that would throw steel shards at stuff. So I reckon this might actually be a cool build to have a look at again and could do quite a bit of damage and maybe impale is, is worth looking at again. But, you know, we'll see what the alt versions of this become as well. Uh, Shield Crush, I put this as number one in the curation. I pretty much championed this build uh, for 3.19 and 3.21. Uh, this is getting a buff, by the way. So the AoE is dropping, which is only by a max 10%, which is nothing. Uh, but 10% more damage when your hits are close to enemies. And to put that in the scope, like, this thing hits hard. Like, you can get this build up to, like, 50 mil DPS pretty easily with just a little bit of investment. And from a league start, it's consistently tanky. The version that I've done and that I've put in the curation is an armor stacker as well, using Replica Dream Feathers and Emperor's Vigilance. So just a stupid amounts of damage and it's stupidly tanky. I was using this to clap Crystal Kings for a very long time. Um, but yeah, definitely a pretty cool improvement here. And I'm keen to see what the alt, alt versions are. Uh, shock Nova, just increased maximum effect shock. Um, that's more important because the maximum effect will do more damage. You can find other sources of applying shock. But also shock duration doesn't necessarily matter too much. Like if you're going to do an on hit skill and shock at the same time then maximum effect is shocked is going to do more damage. So this is a buff. Uh, Shockwave Totem. Yeah, like this is just providing more meters to radius. So this is probably an improvement. Um, and obviously you still need the astral projection rings to make this work. So I've never been a fan of advocating for this one on League Start, even though some people do. Uh, problem with it is it's just too expensive um, initially. So yeah. Uh, shrapnel ballistas. I was playing around with this earlier with artillery ballistas. I just don't think... I don't think this skill is quite... Yeah, I think there are builds that work with this, but not for the ascendancies and not with the tank ability that I'd like to see. But anyway, it'd be cool to see what people do with this. Um, with more projectile speed, seems pretty crazy with double the original speed. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, siege ballistas. Uh, same thing. Um, keen to see what happens with Siege Ballistas. So yeah, we'll watch the space. Sigil of Power. Uh, you know, quality now causes enemies in the area to deal 4% less damage while at max stages. Um, that's pretty good because if you're running Sigil of Power, you're probably running a build that stands in one spot for a little bit, unless you're playing Mana Bond. Uh, so that's actually going to be pretty cool. And that's an advantage for Mana Bond too, if you're running Sigil of Power. Uh, Siphoning Trap. I don't know. I, I don't really worry too much about siphoning trap builds, so I'll leave that for someone who knows a bit more than me. Smite, 10% uh, more AoE damage. So for um, Replica Dream Feather double stacked uh, armor stackers, this is going to actually amp up Smiters, which do armor stack, and they already get to billions of DPS. Uh, so this is actually a pretty good improvement, and it's going to make some of those upper end builds. And like, that's a very expensive build, so you don't usually play that on League Start. Um, but that. Yeah, because you have to stack voices and introspections, but that's actually quite powerful, so that's a pretty good buff. Smoke Mine's just a movement speed, no one cares about that. Uh, snipe, maximum stages. So for those playing like Bleed Bow that use Snipe to proc big damage, um, one extra maximum stage is going to be a pretty big damage buff up, or at least a reasonable damage buff up, so that's pretty cool. Soul Link, no one really cares about that unless you're playing in groups and, let's face it, we're all owners. Uh, Soul Rend, again, like, it looks like Chaos Dot skills might be coming back with, like, what we've seen with the Blight skill with Contagion attached into it, so I wouldn't be surprised if, like, the these skills are, like, multi-appended with multiple different other skills based on when we have a look at the different skill changes and old gem changes, so that's a watch this space for now. Spark. 
no longer grants a 19 percent projectile speed the gem also describes how many projectiles it fires instead of how many additional projectiles are fired quality now causes uh, plus two to projectiles instead of 20 percent projectile speed that just means you'd have to scale projectile spe speed in your build i'm not entirely sure whether or not that is good or a bad thing but that's a sort of watch this space sort of scenario um it doesn't look bad like more projectiles of spark is good and if you've got a high cast rate and you're scaling projectile speed then arguably an extra two projectiles is going to do a lot more damage but we'll see what happens uh spectral helix quality now causes projectiles that have pierced deal a 10 percent increased damage instead 10 percent increased attack damage um i don't really think that changes much one of the problems with spectral helix is that got nerfed pretty much into the dirt so We'll see what the goes. I, I still don't think many people are going to play this build. Um, though it used to be played a hell of a lot. It's just not very good. Okay, so special shield throw. Uh, quality now causes projectiles that have pierced to do 10% more damage. I don't know if this is actually an improvement. So, like, yeah, okay, it's going to do 10% more damage. That's great. But the problem with that is, like, you rely on high attack speed with shield builds. Like, shield shield crush is exactly the same. Like, you want APS. You don't necessarily want pierce damage um, or subsequent damage after piercing an enemy. So, I'm on the bench about this one. I actually think this is not a nerf. Uh, this is not a buff. This is more a nerf than it is a buff. But we'll see how this plays out. Now, Spell Sling is another one um, that I found really interesting. So, quality now causes supported skills to have added spell damage equal to 20 percent of damage of equipped wand if two wands are equipped then it's like half as much damage again quality no longer causes supported skills to do 20 percent increase but that could actually be really powerful and one of the things that they did with spell slinger a few leagues ago because you used to do like volatile dead and um oh there's another one too that you used to attach to spell slinger and you could actually do a really powerful build with it on the necromancer but having that means you could have like a super op wand uh and then basically you know a, absolutely abuse spell slinger again so maybe spell slinger builds might be a thing again they were like i guess four or five leagues ago maybe even greater than that but at this stage you know we'll see what happens um with this and you know what people sort of test with it i'm not entirely again not entirely convinced this is uh, the big the as big improvement as we might expect out of spell slinger but i will say like i really did enjoy playing spell slinger builds and they have improved frenzy as well though that's if you're using it for an offensive uh, on an offensive basis and not for like just proccing frenzy charges and uh and then proccing spell slinger so we'll see what happens with this uh spirit offering again same thing increased effect of spirit offering instead of skill effect duration which is good like you can scale duration in other ways um increased effect is going to make it a more impactful skill uh split arrow like we really only use like split arrow for like um well i guess you use it for like bleed bow and stuff like that but it, it's really only used for like a leveling skill unless you're specifically going bleed bow so and bleed bow at this stage isn't like the most common i guess build out there at the moment but it is pretty cool that you get plus four arrows so you know maybe bleed bow might make a way back from that but it's not really improving the damage and scaling out the subsequent effect of like bleed or anything like that so i don't know i don't think it's that good of a change uh splitting steel again this is another one so i think steel skills are going to be potentially a, a good option this league like as an intermediate melee slash um sort of ranged attack skill and maybe champion with master metal is going to make a comeback like it was a few leagues ago but no longer has any projectiles um Oh, no longer has projectile which have split steel deal 35 percent less damage now has 40 percent chance to impale enemies on hit uh down from 60 percent and has an attack speed uh, multiplier of 90 percent of base and then gets another 40 percent increase to pale impale from 20 percent. so basically it's just like maximum level impale so then you focus on stacking multiple impales with master of metal and watches eyes and things like that based on pride so maybe splitting steel is going to be actually playable again i know it was still playable but it was just really difficult to balance and this sort of makes it a lot more like entry level now which is good um static strike beam frequency so that's a buff i think there was a build that was going around a few leagues ago with this um stacking i think dot or something of that nature 
Um, so Static Strike's getting a bit of a buff up. <laughs> uh, Stormbrand quality now causes the skill to send plus one beam to an enemy. enemy. Um, instead of car speed. I don't know. I'm not a major Stormbrand player, but I do know it's quite a powerful skill and I don't think it's actually been disadvantaged by these patch notes as well. So that's not a bad change. Uh, Stormburst. So quality now provides up to negative four, per sec uh, four seconds of base duration. So the orbs don't sit there for as long based on what I can see here. Or is that a movement? Um, oh no, they sit there longer from what I'm reading there. Instead of having greater AoE effect. I don't know. Gonna have to have a look into that one. Though that is a channeling skill, so yeah. Um, it would work potentially on my Incinerate build um, as a template. And there was a couple of leagues ago, Stormburst was actually quite powerful down in Delve as well, but that was on the old Chieftain, I think. Um, so potentially Stormburst might come back this league. But yeah, they haven't really changed it enough to make it like super significant, so yeah. Um, Stormcall no longer has 10 to 29% increased effective ele element of lightning elements. Quality now provides uh, up to 15% chance for lightning to strike the mark marker when cast instead of 10% increased AoE effect. That's like what instant cast. So I don't know. That it's not a, like a major change because you use Stormcall as a um, Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It hasn't been a common build for a long time. Maybe. Might come back. Uh, Storm Rain. Um, quality now uh, provides each arrow can fire up to plus one beam instead of 10% increased AoE. This is re this was really good on mana forged arrows, but I'm not 100% across whether or not I've heard some or seen some stuff around. Mana forged arrows might be a bit brick now, um, but I don't know enough about the build to be able to comment on that. So... At this stage, this isn't as an improvement storm rain, but be wary just in case Mana Forged Arrows has copped it as well, because that was quite OP and probably overplayed last the last league, so that's probably why it's eaten at this league if, if that's the case. Uh Stormbine, like I never worry about things like Stormbine. Honestly, never considered it for builds is so niche that yeah, whatever. It's a whatever change, it's really not a huge thing. Uh Stormblast Mine no longer has 20% chance to shock enemies. Um, or 20 to 39% increased effect of uh, lightning elements now deal 3 to 8 lightning damage at gem level 1. That's up from 2 to 7, so that's a buff. Uh, and then scaling up to uh, max cap of 1102 from 11 uh, from 1002. So now has 130% effectiveness of added damage from 110, with the quality now causes each mine to apply 1% increased damage taken to each... Uh, to enemies near it up to 150 percent i don't know i'm not I'm, I'm not convinced that that's a big like that's a very small margin of differential on the damage scaling on the high end so i don't really think that's as significant as what someone might interpret it is but i might be wrong about that too uh carrying <clears throat> carrying golem uh no longer has base of up to 38 percent increased minion life um now has 20 percent more life inherently Quality now provides 20% increased buff effect instead of minions deal. Like, the buff itself off the minion with 20% is actually going to make it more, well, arguably more powerful. So, yeah. And that basically goes for each one of the golems. I'm interested to see... It feels like if they're going for buff effect stack, then the alt gems of these might be aberrantly like quite different to what these look like if we're talking about buff stacking like this is sort of like your ashes rings and stuff like that where it's like buff minion damage stuff like that so potentially the alt gems of this might actually be significantly more powerful um so i don't know I, it sort of seems like they're yeah i i, I don't know i'm I'm on the bench about this, but I think these, we might find golem builds might actually be pretty playable in the next league too. Though they're already playable, like, um, you know, if you check out Andy, uh, which I think I've put links up for before, who streams on Twitch, he does AFK flight, Blight with Golem and has since the dawn of time, um, and that build was still good last league. So if they've improved it with alt gems, then arguably golem builds are still pretty damn playable, if not more playable than ever. Holy Relic. Uh... 40% increased buff effect at 20% quality. That's pretty good. Um, 
it's another one that just sort of yeah uh though is that like this is a, and this is actually the thing so i think there was a helm enchant where you could get well no there was a helm you can get plus one to holy relic but it'd be really interesting to see if you could actually get like another plus one based on the type of gem that you're running so you have like two holy relics or something like that um so that's actually one worth keeping an eye out for because holy relic i think it's jeffrey's crest um and then you run like static strike and then you can basically proc multiple hell holy relics and then they do damage based on you static striking around the place and you run that on the guardian um that could actually be a pretty good build moving forward so like it wasn't a it was more like a gimmicky build before um but it might actually be a build that might actually be properly playable by a large number of players but anyway see what happens uh summon raging spirit uh, no longer has minions deal up to 38% more damage. Instead, the melee attacks now naturally gains this damage with uh, scaling of levels. Okay. Uh, quality now provides 30% chance to summon an extra minion instead of minion movement speed. Like, is that bad? Well, you can compensate for the movement speed. The extra minion is actually pretty useful. Um, so, you know, instead of casting every 1 and 3 clicks or 1 and 3 point uh three three recurring clicks um mathematically i don't know how you would do that in real life with a click but anyway um yeah you got a chance of spawning two which gets your upper cap of minions out quicker which means potentially you could you know take down a boss or whatever quicker but yeah i don't know i i, I don't think that's a mate like it's a good change it's not it's a bit of of a benign change doesn't really do too much outside of that because you would pretty much set your cast speed pretty high anyway so that's a watch the space one i like summon raging spirits hasn't really been nerfed so it's still a fully playable build with no real issues so you can still play you know poison srs it's just a little more expensive than what it used to be uh summon reaper so reaper now has 25 percent more life inherently uh which doesn't really matter with reaper because the reaper can be respawned at a whim anyway so it's not that expensive to respawn it um yeah uh quality now causes minions attacks to have 20 percent chance to inflict be bleed instead of providing 20 percent uh increased minion movement speed the problem with reaper builds is you still need a manamu to be able to proc like decent amounts of bleed dot like i've played this build and you do use it with ensnaring arrows and you need a really good bow um <clears throat> like a plus level bow to be able to scale up the reaper minion um and it's not bad like you know it, it i wouldn't rate it as like the best build out there though um but that being said like yeah 20 percent chance to bleed and then you stack on a mana moo it's going to be easier to hit your max cap of bleed with your uh with your reaper moving forwards um and i think you had to run divergent reaper anyway to get exactly that in the first place so they're just making it basically divergent in the base gem which makes sense because reaper is a is a dot minion it's not really a like on hit minion like other minions are and the other thing is you only want to run like skeletons and you run it with uh maloney's mechanism to spawn skeletons when you cast your ensnaring arrow because if you put any other minions on the field your reaper will kill your specters and it'll kill your zombies and that's just a waste of time then so that's basically how that build works and in particular i played that on the jug i think i got it close to like 20 million um bleed dot which is a pretty good build it was taken down like i think i took down like uber shaper and everything with it um but it does get pretty pricey so yeah uh summon skeletons quality now has plus one maximum skeletons like yeah it's skelly mages but you still need to get a um i think it was a dead reckoning um in early league to be able to make skelly mages work and then you know flesh crafter and stuff like that and that stuff early on is pretty expensive so this build doesn't really it's not a huge improvement it's just like one extra minion but it's still a very upper end build that you're gonna have to spend some money on um or currency sorry uh stone golem like there was a really good stone golem build in that was in delve like maybe three or four leagues ago um and maybe the old qualities of this is gonna make that viable again i don't know um but I don't think it's like a huge change to the base gem buff effect just means if you've got it on the field it's going to make you regenerate life quicker and that's pretty cool so you could put this on a um on a cast and damage taken setup and just have it automatically trigger but you still need to have a pretty good pardon me chunk of life to be able to uh, chunk of mana to do that and then enough regenerate to sustain that as well uh sunder waves gain uh, 0.1 meters to radius 
uh, with each area in the sequence instead of increased AoE. This is again them just moving away from increased AoE to this uh, meter rating on radius. So this is just, just how they're rescaling the game by the looks. Same with sweep, no major changes. Um, tectonic slam, uh, up to 30% fissure branching chance. The problem with tech slam is it's scaling. It just doesn't scale well because melee doesn't scale well. The skill actually needs like base damage improvements for it to be a workable skill moving forwards otherwise it's just not worth playing uh, otherwise unless you want to put like almost you know probably 100 or 150 div into it i've ran into the pitfall of playing this on league start and i would never recommend to play tech slam on league start it's just an unreliable build and very expensive to level up it's cool but that's the problem with melee um it just doesn't scale very well uh temper shield i'm not too worried about this it's just shock to enemies so it does nothing temporal rift same thing like i don't know many people who play temporal rift in their builds uh tornado um just increased movement speed from 10 to 20 so not a major major change tornado shot more projectiles it's actually a really good change because more you want more projectiles and tornado shots so that's a buff toxic rain base duration is a buff because it means there's a lot more chance for overlap uh, of the pods so that's an improvement Unearth quality now causes corpse to spawn to have 30% increased maximum life instead of cast speed. So that just means like unearth potentially is going to do more damage um, if it's basing damage off corpse maximum life. Um, so that's an improvement. Vamp link, no one cares. Vengeance, no one cares. That was a build that people played once upon a time with like the, the uh, gladiator and you used to run basically max block with swords or dual wield max block. Um, but it's not really a build anyone plays anymore. So maybe people will come back to it, but again, merely it just doesn't keep up to what it used to be in the game. So um, that's not gonna make any changes whatsoever. Uh, Venom Gaia, maximum of plus zero to 10 caught projectiles. Like that, I feel like that's gonna end up being a good buff because I think Venom Gaia is still a pretty commonly played build in particular on the, um, on the Zerka. So that'll make Venom Guy players happy because that's a buff. Uh, Vigilant Strike, like, I don't know why anyone would play Vigilant Strike. I don't even know why it's still in the game because it's ridiculous. Like, it's hit one thing and get Fortify. Like, why would you want to... What is the purpose there? I guess, like, yeah, most people just run, like, a level one smite setup with Fortify on hit, which is two sockets instead of one. But you don't have to go walk up to the enemy and tap bonk it on the on the shoulder or on the head to be able to get fortify then you can just hit the button and it hits enemies in the vicinities with the, with the lightning charges or smite and then you get fortified it's a lot more efficient so this is just a really badly designed skill unfortunately uh viper strike again just not a commonly played skill like seconds of base duration now which will be on the based on the poison that it procs again just like not that great of a skill not many people play it uh void sphere one of my favorite um yeah one of my favorite skills basically pulls all the enemies in to vortex um i usually use this as a defensive skill in most circumstances so i have an increased cooldown recovery rate as long as the cooldown recovery on cast and damage taken is good then that's actually pretty good and uh, you can pull enemies off you if you're in places like delve so i use this one quite a lot in my cast and damage taken setup uh setups Volatile Dead, 40% um, increased orb movement speed. Like, I feel like this is pretty good. And off the basis of the um, uh, the buff to Spell Slinger, Volatile Dead Spell Slinger was once a really, really good build uh, on the Necromancer. And with 40% increased orb movement speed, I feel like it's actually pretty good. Because uh, what it is, is you blow up the corpses, you, you get, des you get um, Desecrate to spawn corpses, and then you blow those corpses up with Volatile Dead, and then they just go and destroy enemies. It's like orbs that float around all over the screen for anyone who hasn't played Volatile Dead. Um, and then basically everything dies if you've got enough damage scaling, that is. And this looks like it might be crazy. There used to even be a Martyr of Innocence version of the build, but these days it's more so like Spell Slinger because it's really easy. You just slap Frenzy on, slap Spell Slinger on, and just nuke everything on the screen. But it hasn't been good for like four or five leagues, so maybe this will actually make it playable again. We'll see what happens. Uh, Volcanic Fissure. Um, quality now causes plus two projectiles. I wish this existed when the totem version of this build was good, but I think you can still play the totem version of this build. 
and projectiles is fundamentally how you play volcanic fissure in particular when i put this build together when volcanic fissure first came out for totems on the chieftain or the old chieftain um you would run brutus sled sprinkler iron fortress um and then you could run like you know Dawnbreaker or whatever um you know to scale damage and whatnot or you would want to run a, a shape a plus one um shield a plus one totem shield so you could have like three totems up with like your support totems but now we've lost phantasmal ancestral protector that's actually going to be a big disadvantage to um to totem volcanic fissure builds so i'm not sure like where people are going to go with this one but yeah um it's a nice buff just in the wrong league uh Volktaxic burst look i've tried this build multiple times in the past it's just not a good skill um and they haven't really done anything here to scale up the base damage so it's not really worth looking at vortex um every vortex build i've ever done is now ruined so uh shack central's lucky he got away from playing cold dot vortex so it's no longer a instant cast um it is now on a cooldown timer of 0.75 seconds so you can't map it to your move button well you can map it to your move button now but it just takes too long to um to cast so yeah my ignite vortex elementalist from last league is now sunset uh, and i'm never going to be able to play that build ever again unless they change it back so uh a little bit disappointed with that but it's okay, like, you know, and I was glad I was going to do a league starter guide on this, um, and I decided not to, so uh, I'm actually pretty happy with that decision now, because this is wrecked. Anyway, uh, Wave of Conviction. So, no longer has 38% at max point um, increased skill effect duration, now has a base duration of 0.5 at level 1 and scales up to 0.7 from 0.5 at all levels. Uh, now quality applies up to 15% of elemental resistance as penned on enemies. This actually means I put a, a wave of conviction league starter up, I think it was last league or the league before. Um, completely, I know it was last league, um, completely viable build to play. And actually this is a pretty good buff. So if you're looking to play wave of conviction, have a look on the channel and there's a really good league starter guide into an end game guide, which uses Aegis Aurora. But this is actually going to be a pretty good skill to play. It was really good before. This just made it better. Um, Wild Strike. The issue that I have with Wild Strike is to get it to work properly, you need to run a, um, a Crystallize Omniscient setup. You probably could get it working on Yoke of Suffering, but that's how I've done it. Or you could try and get it to work with Trinity, but that's going to be really finicky and expensive to balance. Um, outside of using the Omniscient setup, uh, which means you know you have omniscience and then you do like full pen on enemies with elementals damage um i don't really know how else you would get this skill to work efficiently um yeah i just don't think it's a very good like the skill itself it, it's cool but even even when you put it on a crystallized omniscience build at level 100 it's still like it did a pretty good amount of damage and i did a whole video on it um but it still was just okay i wouldn't sort of call home about it it used to be a really common build but you know maybe there's a good raider variant that could be played with it moving forwards these days uh winter tide brand um look to be honest with you you're going to be better off playing winter tide brand than vortex now on the occultist so i'd recommend this if you want to play a cold dot build moving forwards because basically vortex is ruined so this is probably a good alternative if you want to have that same sort of vibe uh, withering step this just adds up to more with a debuff for the first time for each enemy uh, that enters the area instead of providing increased effect of elusive i actually i don't know if that's an improvement um because elusive is a pretty good um damage reduction stat by the way that you don't get hit but um anyway i don't think it's i think it's a bit of a benign sort of change to the base skill gem anyway that's it for the base skill gems gives you a bit of an idea of how some of the build interactions will work with the base skills obviously i've played and tried a lot of builds over the last few years and uh, i've failed a lot of times in the middle of all of that as well learn a lot of things about a lot of builds that being said i don't know everything i'm very far from knowing everything um but yeah it'd be a good sort of conversation starter i thought with a video like this to talk through things in particular for players that haven't probably played as many skills that don't fully understand the impact that the changes might have um, but definitely uh, post up in the comments below and, you know, let's talk about some of the changes. I'm keen to learn stuff from other people as well all the time. 
But uh, I thought a video like this would be really interesting. But uh, yeah, I, at this stage, I'm not going to go through the um, the support gems, even though they will have an impact on builds from some of the ones that I've read so far. But uh, anyway, if a video, uh, if, if you guys want to see me go through all the support gems and talk about the impact that that'll have, you know, when you append it to skills and things like that, and the type of builds that might be linked to that, um, then let me know in the comments below. Anyway, until next time, don't forget to like and sub to the channel. Don't forget to like and or don't forget to follow the Twitch. And uh, anyway, keep expecting videos coming out. And yes, there is a Delve League starting video that's going to be coming out probably in the next few days. But at this stage, um, I need a little bit of a break. So I might hop on stream later tonight. Anyway, uh, have a good one and stay filthy. And I'll see you guys later.